Welcome to the deep dive. Now, even as the planet generally warms up, there are these uh, surprising exceptions, right? Today, we're taking a quick look into a really fascinating climate mystery. There's this persistent cold spot kind of tucked away in the North Atlantic Ocean, south of Greenland. Yeah, it's quite the anomaly. Scientists have been, well, puzzled by it for over a century now. It just doesn't seem to fit the global warming trend. We call it North Atlantic Warming Hole or uh, N-E-W-H for short. Right, N-A-W-H. So our mission today is to unpack what this cold patch is really about, you know, why it's even there, and what this slightly counterintuitive scientific fact might mean for you, for the climate globally. Okay, let's dig in a bit. So this cold spot, it's been this kind of sticking point in climate science for ages, it sounds like. What were people thinking caused it before, and what's the, uh, the latest idea? Exactly, it was a bit of a head scratcher. Yeah. But um, recent research points pretty clearly to one main culprit, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, the AMOC. AMOC. Oh. And the key thing is understanding how it works. It's this huge, vital ocean current system. Think of it like a massive conveyor belt in the ocean. It moves warm, salty water up towards the north, and then colder water flows back south. It has this profound impact on climate, I mean, across whole continents. A conveyor belt. Oh. Okay, I get that image. So how does that connect to the cold spot? You mentioned it's the weakening of the AMOC. Precisely. That's the breakthrough. The study shows that a weakening AMOC is the best fit, the best explanation for this North Atlantic warming hole. See, when that current slows down, less heat gets transported north and uh, less dense salty water too. Ah, so it was a double whammy then. Less heat and a change in the water itself. Exactly. You end up with cooler water pooling there south of Greenland, and it's also fresher water, less salty, less dense. Yeah. Researchers actually put numbers on it. They estimated the AMOC weakened quite a bit, uh, somewhere between about one and almost three spur drops per century. That's from 1900 up to 2005. One to three spur drops. Wait, what's a spur drop in like real terms? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's a unit we use for massive flow rates. One spur drop is one million cubic meters of water flowing per second. Whoa, one million cubic meters every second. So losing even one or two of those per century is huge. It's absolutely massive. Think about it like losing the flow of several Amazon rivers worth of heat transport across the Atlantic every second for a hundred years. That's a monumental shift in energy. And the climate models, they confirm it. A slower AMOC literally creates a gap in heat transport. Less warm water makes it that far north. And that gap lines up perfectly with the cold spot location. Precisely. It creates that cooler zone, uh, roughly between 40 degrees north and 65 degrees north latitude. You know, kind of stretching from off, off the U.S. East Coast, past the U.K., up towards Iceland. It matches the NEWH location really well. Okay, that makes sense spatially. And you mentioned the saltiness changing too, the freshening. Right, the salt transport changes as well. A weaker AMOC means you get more fresh water accumulating near the surface there. That freshening effect was strongest right in the NEWH area, and it even extended up into the Labrador Sea. Less salt makes the water less dense, which can uh, further affect the current itself. It's a feedback loop, sort of. So it's not just temperature and salinity data points on a map. What does this actually mean for us, the yeah. planet? What are the like knock-on effects? Well, connecting it to the bigger picture, this isn't just some isolated cold patch. It actually influences the jet stream. And that, in turn, can alter weather patterns pretty significantly. We're talking across Europe and also North America. Okay, so weather patterns. What about life in the ocean itself? That too. It's a direct threat to marine ecosystems. Think about fish species, for example. Many are adapted to very specific temperatures and salinity levels. If those conditions change drastically, like in the NWH, it could really disrupt where they live, where they breed, their migration routes. It's like pulling the rug out from under them. And looking ahead, if greenhouse gas emissions keep going up, what's the prediction? Does the AMOC keep weakening? That is the major concern, yes. If emissions continue on their current path, models suggest the AMOC could weaken further, and that would likely mean even more pronounced cooling in that North Atlantic region near Greenland, and potentially uh, stronger, more widespread climate impacts downstream, especially for Europe. So you see, what really stands out is that this seemingly small, isolated cold spot isn't isolated at all. It's more like a, a, a vital sign, a critical indicator showing that a much larger system, this massive ocean current, is slowing down. Mm -hmm. And that has these really far-reaching implications for our climate, for ecosystems. Yeah, it really hammers home how interconnected everything is, doesn't it? These huge planetary systems working in the background. So as you think about this deep dive, maybe consider this. 
What other massive invisible currents, ocean currents, atmospheric currents, maybe even currents of change are shaping our world right now? And what subtle, maybe surprising signals might they be sending us about what's coming next?